Hello everybody and a happy new year from me, your resident marine biologist YouTuber. We've made it through the hottest year on record and into 2024. But as is characteristic this time of year, before we really dive into 2024, I'd like to take a moment to pause and reflect on some of the biggest ocean news stories that came out last year. We start with some breaking news this hour. In the past minute or so, European scientists have said that 2023 left the records tumbling like dominoes, confirming it was the hottest year ever recorded. The Florida Keys are known for their warm waters. But now they're reaching hot tub-like conditions. Uh, scientists are calling this the worst coral bleaching event in Florida's recorded history. The sea ice surrounding Antarctica is well below any previous recorded winter level. So the world and our oceans are changing more and more every year. Last year was indeed the hottest year ever recorded. And these really warm temperatures were also felt in our oceans. With the sea temperatures around Florida in particular reaching hot tub-like temperatures. This extreme marine heat wave had devastating impacts on the local marine life in the area. We had countless fish washing ashore dead just because they couldn't handle the hot temperatures. But the most notable impact was on the coral reefs in the area. Florida experienced their worst ever coral bleaching event with up to like 95% of their corals either bleaching or dying. At the time of the event, local scientists and conservationists were literally removing corals from the ocean and placing them in tanks on land just to give them a chance at survival through this extreme marine heat wave. It was also bad news in terms of ice with the levels of Antarctic sea ice reaching an all time low. And a lot of scientists are worried that this is a long term downward trajectory that's not really going to change. And we only need to think of the poster child of climate change that is the polar bear sitting on a melting block of ice to know that this is a big problem. And with all of these changes that are happening in the oceans, animals are having to respond and change their behaviors to cope with what's going on. So marine scientists have recently coined the term tropicalization, which refers to those tropical species, so the animals that live around the equator expanding their ranges to move both further north and further south as the warm temperatures expands further from the equator and similarly we have the temperate species also having to exp expand their range both further south and further north as these warm temperatures creep away from the equator. So the first example of this was actually documented in the Mediterranean Sea, which is now considered a tropicalization hotspot due to the large increase in number of tropical species that are now present in this area. But since then, it's been kind of documented throughout the world's oceans and a big paper was published last year that investigated these trends over the last 20 years. And it basically found that, you know, kind of everything is on the move. There's this mass migration of these ocean animals, which has huge consequences for how ecosystems systems function, for how species interact with each other and with the oceans around them, for how we interact with the oceans. So there's a lot changing. Unfortunately, not all animals are going to be able to cope with and adapt to these changes. So there are going to be some that fall by the wayside. And we did have a very big milestone disaster that was announced towards the end of last year. The first ever marine fish to go extinct as a result of human activity. The victim, the poor little Java stingery, a unique, roughly dinner-sized plate stingray that was only known from one specimen collected in the Jakarta fish market all the way back in 1862. And despite extensive monitoring of the fish markets in the area and a number of surveys having been undertaken, not a single hint of the species has been seen since then. And so it has now officially been declared as extinct. This extinction was put down to really intensive fishing pressure in the region, which has been ongoing for decades and has caused a decline in the overall coastal fish community since the late 1800s already. And there's also been a lot of industrialization in the area. So a lot of habitats have been degraded and destroyed. So this poor little guy didn't stand a chance and it's goodbye Java stingery. And while it might just seem like one small species going extinct, it represents a huge warning sign to us as society. And it will be the first of many extinctions to come if we do not change what we are doing to the world. 
Remember the Morgian skate that we spoke about last year? Well, he's also on his way out. There's less than a thousand individuals left on the brink of extinction and is one species of many. So it really is just a wake up call to us that we really need to start changing how we interact with the world around us and just providing a space where these animals can be safe and carry on living their lives without us just killing them all. But on a happier note, there have been some conservation wins from 2023, which provide us with some hope that the oceans and all who live within are not doomed for eternity. Tonight at 11. Doom! So probably one of the biggest wins was the High Seas Treaty that was signed by more than 70 countries at the start of last year. An historic agreement to protect the world's oceans has been approved after 10 years of talks. We did do a video covering this, but just briefly, the high seas are those areas of the oceans that extend beyond an individual's country's jurisdiction. And it covers about two thirds of our oceans. So it's most of our oceans that doesn't belong to anybody, hasn't really fallen under any kind of jurisdiction or has had any legislation previously. So it's been open for all to plunder and destroy, which is what has happened. And there have been a lot of atrocities committed on the high seas both to people and the animals that live in the high seas but thankfully this is now slowly starting to change with this treaty coming into place there will be some kind of legislation governing these areas and it will pave the way for marine protected areas to be declared in the high seas which is a huge huge win for the oceans because they are very important habitats to a lot of marine animals even though it's places that most of us are never ever going to see. On a similar note, the International Seabed Authority, which is a UN-backed agency that has some kind of say over what happens on the seabeds of the high seas, has postponed this monumental decision to either ban or allow deep sea mining. So at the moment, industrialized deep sea mining is kind of not allowed, but there's been this momentum working towards this decision that, you know, kind of everybody's behind whether we're either going to allow it going forward and countries are going to be allowed to do this deep sea mining or whether it's going to be banned. And we as a society are just saying this is, you know, we're not going to do this going forward. Um, so the fact that this decision was postponed is not really great, but it's not bad either. Um, the decision is going to be made this year. We're obviously hoping it's going to be a ban because deep sea mining on that scale will have disastrous consequences for some of the most vulnerable ecosystems on our planet. A couple of big deals were also agreed upon at COP28 towards the end of last year with particular successes around mangrove forests. So there were a couple of deals that were agreed upon by a number of different countries to protect and restore mangrove forests going forward, which is really great because mangroves are really important to a whole number of ocean animals that rely on them for food and homes and that kind of thing but also to us as people because mangrove forests have a whole bunch of ecosystem services they sequester carbon they protect our coastlines from storm damage and all kinds of things so that was a really great win there was also some work around decarbonizing shipping which is a win for climate change and finally the pacific nations came together and agreed to sustain manage 100% of the Pacific Ocean, which is a huge win. On a bit of a smaller scale, certain types of single-use plastics have been banned from England and Wales, which is really great. They're a little bit behind on the European Union who announced this ban two years ago, but still a good win for the ocean because it means less plastic entering into our oceans. Similarly, 4Ocean, which is a company that sells bracelets to fund the removal of plastic from the oceans, hit quite a big milestone. And they have removed more than 15 million kilograms of trash from our oceans, rivers, coastlines, which is kind of just a bit of a mind boggling number. And this is not a sponsored video, but please support them if you can. Finally, we've had some pretty weird and wacky discoveries that came out of 2023. My personal favorite was the golden orb that completely stumped scientists who were exploring the deep sea back in September. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to make of that. Is it a coral? Is it a sponge? Is it an egg case? Nobody quite knew what to make of this thing. Uh, we did a whole video on it, so please go check it out. And still to date, I haven't been able to find any update on what these scientists think it is. So it's still very, very intriguing. Next up was a really popular story that kind of caused my Instagram to go a little bit haywire. So I'm going to insert that little clip here now. 
Did you know that hammerhead sharks have this super weird behavior that marine biologists have just discovered? These sharks are found to hold their breath for an average of 17 minutes. Why in the world would a shark need to hold its breath, you might ask? Well, it all comes down to them trying not to freeze to death. At night, these sharks make really deep dives down to about 800 meters or so in search of their favorite deep sea snack. But the waters down there get really, really cold and these cold temperatures are essentially lethal to the sharks. As they're diving, they take a deep breath, they close their mouths, fold their gill slits in tightly against their body so that none of this cold water can actually enter into their body. And through this breath holding technique, they were able to conserve the internal body temperature while hunting at depth. But can you imagine trying to hold your breath for 17 minutes while running around hunting for food? Nature never ceases to amaze me. And all of this is not even to mention the fated Titan submersible that imploded on its way down to see the Titanic killing five passengers, all those crazy orcas off the coast of Siberia that are damaging and sinking boats. There's been a lot that's happened in our oceans this year. Let me know down in the comments which is your favorite story and let's see what 2024 is gonna hold in store for us. Subscribe to the channel and I'll keep you updated as the year unfolds.